it's Kirsten, happy October today, I've got a September roundup for you, what I read, what I didn't read, there's more of the first and the second, so that's good, right? I hope you had a good September, I had a satisfactory September, and here's what I read. The first thing I finished in September was The Brightest Foul by Shauna Maguire. This is a series about Toby, who is a changeling. She is part human, part fairy, she's a detective, she gets sent on missions, in this case she's been sent to find a missing person and she has to cross realms and worlds and gather together a complex cast to get the missing person back. She's been blackmailed, all the people she loves are being held hostage and she has to get them back. And I mean this is a reasonably the sort of book, the plot that I'm never surprised to find in a Toby book, but they're always really, really well executed and I love them so much. Apparently it's 10 years since the first one came out, which given that book 15 or something just came out, they keep coming, <laughs> but they're nice reads, they're nice quick reads and I would highly recommend if you haven't read them, probably starting at Rosemary and Rue, the first one. But you can just pick them up midway, I think. I'd start at the beginning. I did start at the beginning. Okay, the next thing is Shakespeare's Champion by Charlene Harris. I was expecting vampires. I did not get vampires. It's a straight detective story about racism in the Deep South. Um, so it was uncomfortable in many ways. It was the second in the series, but I don't think that mattered. And I don't think I'll be picking them up again, but if you like detective books about racism, that's a not unreasonable place. It wasn't bad. It was just not exactly what I was hoping for when I saw the name Charlene Harris on a book, which is my fault, not hers. The next book I read was Radio Silence, and you were so right I mean it always helps that they came to my place where I live here um, but it's about Frances and her love of a certain YouTube channel and she meets the creator and there's life stuff going on her best friend had gone missing sometime before and the brother has issues, as you would do if your sister had mi gone missing. And it's about finding your way through complex relationships. And also about finding the missing girl and about this YouTube channel. Which doesn't really exist, but you can listen to some of it online. Um, it's, worth, it's worth doing. And I really, really liked it. <laughs> There's lots of other people all going, Radio Silence, you should read it. And I think like they're a lot more articulate than I am about it. But I really liked it. Next, The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. I had to realise that most of the plot is in the italics above the chapter headings. And I normally skip those bits. But this is about the background copy, uh, background characters in an end of the world book. So in this book, there's stuff going on in the italics, which is dealt with by the Indie Kids. And this is about what the people who just exist to be in their back of their classroom, or they might be in the queue in front of them in the chemist or whatever, you know, that kind of character who isn't really a character in an end of the world book takes up all of this book. And it turns out they have health issues and friendships and love and all that stuff going on, just like everyone else. They have family drama, they have a desperate desire for pancakes at midnight, you know, whatever you've got, everybody's got that. And, oh, not exactly the same thing. I'm not saying everyone's going on the same road, but everyone's got their issues. And this really drew that out really well. The next book is The Selection by Kira Cass. I read this because my running group is reading. It's sort of like one of those awful rating shows that you just can't look away. And why do they always go on bingo? Why? 
why? I don't know. They never went on bingo on blind date. They're all like abseiling down, down their volcanoes. You've never seen blind date, have you? Okay. Show my age now. Anyway, in this book, I really like they just catapult you straight into the world and you have to kind of work out where you are. I really like that in a book. I was really hoping for the main character to have a lesbian romance, which didn't happen. Maybe in the next book, but I get the feeling she might be straight. It's another book where everyone's straight. What is with that? What? I, I don't get it. But in this particular one, this girl, America, is competing for the heart of the prince of the new realm, whose name I've already forgotten which is where America used to be and it's all about cementing the bonds within the country by, ha by having the royalty pick a, a citizen to marry. It's all very weird but quite compelling. The other side of Lost, and we're into contemporary, and it was quite sad. This is about a girl, Mari, who had a cousin she was very close to. She got involved with social media and lost contact with the cousin, or lost their friendship kind of disintegrated. But when the cousin dies, Mari suddenly realises that what she really wants is that friendship back and to be the person she was when she was friends with her cousin Brie and her cousin had left her her hiking gear and a, in, which included a plan of how she was going to cross the country and she just, Murray just gets fed up, quits social media in an epic YouTube chat, YouTube video and then goes on the hike and this is about finding yourself on the trail it's about friendship, it's about meeting people who accept you for who you are and learning to accept yourself for who you are, maybe not even not, not as intertwined as I make it sound, but it's a really great book, I really love this. And it's got a little mountain on the spine. The next book I read is an arc of Damsel and I wasn't sure at first, the main character is a prince who thinks the best thing about princes is Duarte Senya. And it's very misogynistic. He's very misogynistic. He expects his mother to have the same views as him. He expects everyone to have the same views as him. He just goes through life expecting that everything he wants is going to be handed to him to pay and not accepting the consequences. <laughs> and when I read the first started reading this, I was like, mm, not sure about this book because I wasn't sure how the author felt about that kind of person but <laughs> the protagonist is the damsel and this book is about patriarchy it's about that kind of relationship and let's face it we've all had them and <sighs> we've all met men like that and this is a great, I mean, it's YA. <laughs> it would be great if we could give this kind of book to young boys to not turn into that kind of man. But I suspect that they'll read it and go, if they're likely to turn into that kind of man, they'll read it and go, oh yeah, that's really sad. I'm not like that. <sighs> this book is about patriarchy. It has a really satisfying ending. I love this book you feel like you need some light relief from that kind of relationship at the moment it's not light at the beginning but it's a really really satisfying ending and I would pick this one up uh, next book I've got for you is Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab it was less piratey than I was led to expect but it has plenty of Lila so if you like Lila if Lila is your favorite and your best then this is definitely the book for you. I have gone straight ahead and reserved the third book in the trilogy because it has an unsatisfying, to my mind, unsatisfying ending. Uh, but it's all about, it's difficult to talk about without giving spoilers for the first book. But it's all about what's going on in White London after the catastrophe at the end of the first book. It's all about what's going in Red, uh, Red London with 
and it's all about the relationship between Lila and Cal and Re and Re's other friend and yeah it, it, the thing about these books is it's a fantasy setting it's a magical setting and it's all about the relationships between the characters so if any of that appeals then you should definitely start on Dark Shade and Magic for these ones and then I read Sue Mage Solution by G.L. Carragher. It is werewolf erotica. It's werewolf erotica. I mean, <laughs> what else can I say? I mean, there's a little bit of non-erotica in there to move on the plot. But if you're looking for a light, fluffy romance in which the nice gentleman gives his lover a nice, big hay of flowers and they go out to dinner this is this is not that kind of romance they do actually eat dinner together but yeah I mean it's light it's fun it's got werewolves what more could you ask for in werewolf erotica the thing I finished which I've been reading for four months now is Mistborn by, Bri by Brad and Sanderson. I did really enjoy it but it's quite heavy. It's about slavery. It's about how... Uh, it's about how monstrous slavery is. It's really, really no holds barred. Absolutely tough. This is not acceptable. And I love that. I love that he's like that. I love that he's prepared to just sit there and say, we did bad. It's not good. It's not, we're not, I can't cope with this at all. And it's just really heavy. So I'd highly recommend it if you like high fantasy. Again, it's, it's quite long, but it's got a really intricate, involved plot. And there wasn't a lot of space where I thought, no telling me that it just it just is that long you know sometimes stories just take a long time to tell and that's what this one is like but it is a hard central theme but a worthwhile one lots of people absolutely love it and I did absolutely love it and I have gone on to the second book in the series which is another 800 page tome <laughs> and I would like to see where he goes from here given the way they left the first book and I will not be telling you that next month because it is going to take me more than a month to read it <laughs> and the book I decided to DNF I, I'd been meaning to read this since it came out sort of over 20 years ago more like 30 years ago Brick Lane by Monica Alley I really wanted to love this book and I think I would have done if I'd read it when it first came out but actually I just got two thirds of the way through the book thinking they're all straight. How can a book this size be composed entirely of characters who are straight? Which kind of detracted from the story somewhat. It's about immigrants and the family they leave behind. It's about finding your own feet in a new community. It's about the difference between being the first generation and the second generation. It's about the relationships between men and women. It's, it's a great book. I just couldn't mentally get my head in that space. So if you're better at reading books where everyone's straight than I am, I would definitely recommend it. I can understand why it was so popular at the time. I just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's me. I just couldn't get my head around it. And it's got this gorgeous cover with all the lovely sorry fabrics and the same on the hardcover but that one will be going back to the book swap booth I'm afraid okay well uh, so yeah there we have it what are you reading what have you read recently that you enjoyed <laughs> did you like Brick Lane are you disappointed that I didn't finish it I am a little bit but I will see you soon and I hope you also had a good September. Bye.